Hello, this is going to be my first Sauerbraten video, um, and what Sauerbraten is, is it's a game, if you don't know what it is, it's a game, um, that's sort of, it's an FPS game, it's, uh, open source game, it's free, you can download it online at sauerbraten.org, um, and everything, the thing that makes it unique is that everything is based on cubes, and, um, it's really easy to edit and make your own levels in it. And anyway, the main reason I'm making this video is um, as a video response to someone that I told about Sauerbraten. And they, s well, we got into sort of a, like an argument about whether um, Sauerbraten is like Minecraft or not. And no, it's not really like Minecraft. The only thing that makes it like Minecraft is the fact that they both use blocks to build out of. But other than that, it's very different. And I ju I'm just going to make a quick video here. So what you see right now is the particles reference um, to Sauerbraten. I'm going to show a few of the more advanced things to Sauerbraten that you probably wouldn't figure out by just um, using it and experimenting with it. These are some of the things that you, you'd have to be told in order to know. So on this list here, um, these are some particles that you can create. These are the types and these are the commands over here that you enter into the um, command line and you do that by um, pressing the tilde key after Sauerbraten is open um, so you enter these things in and it will produce the following right here um, and then if I go down a little bit um, here are the colors down here um, the colors are a little bit weird they are hex codes like you would think um, but they, they're only, um, like three bytes or something like that, which is very weird. I don't know why they're not three, but I don't know what they are, but they're not like normal hex color codes that have four characters to them. These only have three. Um, so you can see here are some sample colors, um, down here. And this thing just explains how you produce your own colors right there. Um, so these color codes are to be entered um, into the particles up here. See it right here where it says color, 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 color? That's where you would enter those colors. Um, so yeah, I'll probably include this uh, little document here as a link in the video description so that you can download it and print it out because it's really nice like if you, to actually have it printed out and on the table. Uh, so you can just type stuff in while you're making a game and like have some fire or something like that some sort of effect um, Okay, so anyway, um, I'm gonna stop recording this and start up a different recording program so I can actually show you uh, my level and some of the things in Sauerbraten Okay, so hopefully this is recording. I'm not sure how fast it starts recording because I remember when I press the key, sometimes it lags a little before it starts, but hopefully it's recording now. Um, so here's Sauerbraten. This is the main screen that comes up when you start it. Um, so I'm going to enter, I'm going to press the tilde key to open the console. And going to type map, and then the name of my map. Okay, so this is my map here. Um, it's basically just a forest with a castle. Um, took me a while. It took me like maybe a week and a half to make, but I didn't work on it every day. Maybe like an hour and a half a day. Um, but yeah, there it is. Um, little fire area with a little roof and a chimney. Um, so yeah, let's see. The first thing I'm going to demonstrate is some of the more simple stuff that you may already know. Um, at BC, if you're watching this um, as a video response, um, I didn't watch all of your uh, Sauerbraten video because it was pretty long. Um, so if there are certain things that I'm repeating in here, um, that's mainly because I'm also making this as a video for other people. So if there are things that um, you already know, don't think I'm like, retelling you or something like that um, so anyway um, some things you might find easier is like say you want to texture a surface of something 
Um, so you roll it up and select the surface. And um, a better way um, to texture, you probably know that you can texture by holding down the Y key and rolling the mouse wheel. And that will allow you to change to uh, different textures. But the problem is this list is really long and you can't see everything at once. So what you do is you press, after it's highlighted, you press the F2 key. And it'll open up this menu here with that has pages of tons and tons of textures. So, like, and it has pretty much any theme you could want, like old style and modern and, like, technological and stuff like that. Um, so it has everything. So you just go in there and you just pick one of them, click it, and then you press the F2 key again and see it just changed it so um and that's a really good way to choose textures you can pretty much get anything you want that way um another thing i wanted to talk about is um the models in the game um if you notice there are certain things like this tree right here um some of these bushes uh this plant right here um those aren't actually made out of cubes they're just models um, because you can tell, I mean, if somebody tried to make that out of a cube, that would be pretty hard. Um, so, in order to load models, you highlight an area of the ground, like right there, and then you click. And then you press the F4 key. And that brings up the list of all the models that are included with Sour Broughton. Um If you know how to use Maya or some sort of modeling program, you can make your own for it, too. Um, and there's a folder that you put it in. I don't know exactly what the name of the folder is, but uh, there's a folder that has all the models, and you just can copy it right in there. Um, and then you'll have it on this list, and then you can just choose it, and so you can load your own models into the game. Um, but anyway, just to demonstrate, uh, I'll do water or pillar. And see how it just spawned a pillar right there. Um, so, and you can see that it's obviously not made out of blocks. So, um, in order to manipulate this, you can drag it around. Um, if you drag this face, it will move it this way. And if you drag this face, it will move it the other way. Um, another thing that you can do is copy and paste objects. I don't know if you knew about this, but that's another uh, sort of hidden feature. Um, if you select an object and click on it like this, press the C key. Not Control C like you would think, but just the C key. Press that. Um, then highlight an area of the ground like this and click it and then press the V key and it will spawn as many as you want and see so you can do that with models and you can also do that with cubes too so if you wanted to clone say a section of certain cubes for some reason like if you wanted to clone this section right here you'd select it like that and then you press C and then go somewhere else like there and press V and you can see it just spawned uh, the cubes right there um, so you can do stuff like that uh, like for example you can copy a whole um, object of cubes like if it took you a while to make and you just want to make another one you can do that like for example see this cave here um, there's another cave over there um, I just copied that one and pasted it here and then I added this hole into it to add some randomness um, but in order to do that, you just select over the whole object like this. And then you press C, just like you would with a other object. And then you click and V it somewhere. And it does sometimes it doesn't paste exactly where you would think. Um, so you have to press the U key to undo and redo it a few times till you get it in the place where you want it. Because uh, sometimes that's a little confusing. Oh, and also, uh, it tends to paste the objects into the ground. So before you paste, it's always good to have one block up just like this. And then paste on top of that one block. Don't just paste on the ground like that. Because it'll make it actually go into the ground a little. Um, I don't know why it does that, but it does. <laughs> so anyway, um, another thing I wanted to talk about um is the lighting on the game as you can see after i've done all this manipulation to the level the lighting kind of changed it got brighter in this one section and in the other section it's sort of it's sort of like patchy lighting as you can see over here it's sort of um like the color it was before and then here there's a chunk 
that uh, looks all weird and like a different color and that's just because the uh, light maps have to be recalculated so in order to do that you go to escape editing and then you go to lighting and calc light one and it should calculate the light usually it takes um, b about two to three minutes um, but sometimes it only takes like 45 seconds, something like that. That's probably what it'll take for this. Um, depends on the number of lights in your level and uh, the size of the level. Um, so, yep, it's loading. Okay, there we go. Now you can see that um, everything is back to pretty much how it was before. And you can see that it's automatically added a shadow for this cave that I've produced. Um see um, so it does the lighting pretty well I like that um, okay so let's see what else did I want to show um, I'm gonna go underground and show my the kitchen area that I made in the basement here as you can see I have torches uh, using those particles that I was showing you earlier on the list um, so those particles that's how I created these flames if you weren't, if you didn't enter those commands, you'd have a torch that looked like that, without any light on it. Um, so it's pretty nice to be able to use those particles. Um, so uh, this is the kitchen area that I made, um, and there's a lot of uh, lighting done in here. Um, so yeah, I can show you how to create a light object. Um, so as you can see, when I go on E. Um, in this room, there are two lights, one there and one there, and they're both yellow lights. That's what makes it have this sort of fiery kind of look. Um, so in order to create a light, you select an area, like on the ground, and it, co it could also be on the wall or just somewhere um, near where you want the light to be. It doesn't have to be exactly where it is because you can always move it later like that. Um, but yeah, so just select an area, and then you go to Escape, Editing, and you go to ends and then light don't get confused and go to lighting lighting is where you go where when you want to calculate the light using this thing for some reason they split it up into two different sections and it's really confusing but that's how they did it so in order to do uh... to actually make a light you go to ends and then you go to light and over here you have your r your g and your b 255 255 255 so right now it's uh... white as you can see right here um... and you can drag these and you can see that it changes the color of the light and uh... for some reason i noticed that the the color code here is um... a full color code unlike the other one um... that the other ones that were listed on my particles list uh, I, I don't understand why it's like that, but I guess they mix the two different types of color codes. But the ones on the list should still work if you're uh, making particles and stuff. Um, but if you're just making a light object, you can do it all in here without using any of those commands. Um, so I have y purple selected right now. And you can also select from the list of presets below down here. And then this is the radius of the light, so that's how bright it is. Um, then when you're done creating the light, you press the new and light thing right here. And that creates the light object. And now you can see it right there. And then you can drag it where you want. And uh, you also probably noticed that it didn't change in here, that the lighting still looks the same. And that's because I didn't calc the light. So every time you make a change uh, to a light or to anything, actually, you have to... In order to see the change, you have to recalculate the light. So I usually don't do it that often because it takes a while. But like after I've done a major, like added like a ton of lights to a map, then you go to lighting and you uh, recompute. Damn it! Right here, and you recompute the light like I showed before. I add to this video. Um. So first thing is th uh, the float speed thing. If you ever go on a multiplayer server on Sour Broughton, you'll notice that people float around really fast. And sometimes it, they almost, it seems like they almost just disappear and all of a sudden they're somewhere else. And that's because they're using float speed. So in order to do that, you go to the console by pressing tilde, like usual. 
and then you type in float speed um, with no space um, and then float speed sp and then a space after it um, and then a number between one and a thousand I think I usually do like 700 and now um, I won't walk around any faster that stays the same but if I go and I press E I move really fast see so that's a trick that few people know but um, people that don't go on the servers very often don't know and so that's one of the things um, let's see oh yeah I also wanted to demonstrate um, creating one of the particles um, on the list that I provided just so you know exactly what you're doing um, so I'm gonna enter in the thing and just create a particle okay so I go to the console first select an area and then I go to the console and now let's see I'm gonna do, 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 do. I guess I'll just do colored flames for now. Um, so I'll do the first one. So it's new ent particle zero. New ent. Okay, and and then it's um the radius, the height, and the color. So um I didn't give for some reason I didn't give a range for those. Uh, but I think it's 1 through 100 is a reasonable amount, um, if I remember correctly. So I'll do like 50, 50, and and then the color. For the color, I'll do, let's see, I'll try to do green. So 0x0f0. Zero 0x0f0. X zero 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 X zero zero. Enter. Yep, and see that just generated a green light right there, or a green fire. Oops, it's too fast. There. Um, yep, so that's sort of a little demonstration of how you do particles. So you just type those things in on the list that I provided earlier, um, and it'll create particles like that. And same rules apply to particles as it would to a light or a model or something like that. So if you want to make more of them without typing it over and over again, you just click it press C and then you can V and make as many as you want um yep so let's see do, do, do. um there was something else I was gonna show oh yeah well a quick thing uh, co the console is just like command prompt is so if you like if you type in something um, before and you want it again you just open up the console and you press the up arrow key and it will bring back see how it just did that it will bring back what you typed before uh, so for example if you were g wanted to make another flame um, exactly like this one but a different color um, you would go and you could just bring it up again like that and then just modify the color aspect of it and leave the rest the same so you just backspace this part and make it like, I don't know, F00. And see, now we have a red one. Um, so that's how you can quickly modify things like that, it's like command prompt. Um, another thing is to chat. When you chat, you have to make sure you just backspace that thing first. Um, so that now when I type, instead of typing a command, I'm actually saying something. So when you're online, that's how you speak. Uh, you press the tilde, backspace the thing, and then type. Um, so yeah, uh, let's see what else. I think that's it. Um, oh yeah, a uh, few, a uh, little bit of info here. Let's see. I'm gonna do a little bit on no clip. Um, pro uh, if you haven't been into uh, like designing 3D games or anything very much you probably don't know what clip and no clip means um, so I'm gonna demonstrate that um, I'm gonna select an area of this roof um, like right here like that um, and as you can see when I press E and I walk here everything's all good I just walk normally um, if I select an area like this and I open up that menu it's not that 
there it is. It's F3. For some reason, I was getting weird. Okay, so you press F3, and then if you no-clip that, um, now when I go back in, I fall through it. Um, so you can make hidden traps that way. For example, if you wanted to make a lava pit that people could fall into, what you would do is you just cut out a section of the ground. Uh, you can see my kitchen down there. But whatever, that doesn't matter for now. Um, I'll just do it anyway. Um, so you could, like, you could, like, put a thing like this. Hold on. Like that. Um, and then press F3 and make some lava. And now you can see there's lava in there. Um, so now you can cover that back up. Then you can select the area. I don't know why I'm showing people this, because I do this all the time in multiplayer, and, like, people fall into it and die all the time. Uh, but anyway, so, so you select it, and then you do the no-clip thing. And then you just, it looks all normal, but when you walk, you die. <laughs> um, so that's a trick. Um, let's see. Anything else? Anything else? Oh, yeah. Um... All faces, really handy. Um, so, let's say you make a block. Okay, see how I just made this block here? Um, if I select the entire block, and I ch uh, go to um, F2, and I change the texture. Uh, notice that it only changed the texture on that side, even though I have the whole thing selected. If you want it to change the texture on the whole thing, you press zero, the the number zero on the keyboard, uh, not on the numpad, but on the actual like top row thing. You press zero, and you see up in the corner a little thing that says "All faces on." Um, it's really small. It's in blue text up there. Um. And after you do that, now when I go to the texture thing and select something, see? Now it does it to the whole object. So now that all faces is on, whenever I make something and I want to change the texture, all I have to do is select the thing and then it changes the whole thing. So you don't have to do each side of it, which makes it a lot faster to make stuff. Um, that's another thing I didn't learn about until, like, re just recently. Um, and it makes creating stuff on this a lot faster. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I think that pretty much covers everything. Um, yep, I think that's it. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and, uh, if there's any more things I think of, I'll make another video. Uh, so if you're interested in comp stuff, subscribe to my channel. And, yep, thanks for watching.